Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jane Reggio, Chairman of the Blackstone Millville Regional School District School Committee. And we're coming to you today to talk to you about the regional agreement and the amendments that the school committee has proposed in the changes to the regional agreement. So the Blackstone Millville Regional School District is part of a governance body. That governance body was created by the towns of Blackstone and the towns of Millville when they chose to come together and create a unified regional school district. They did this well over 40 years ago. In the creation of a regional school district, the state of Massachusetts recognizes school districts as their own government entity. So we are talking about changing an agreement between the two committees or amending an agreement between the two committees that describes the relationship of how this governance body connects to the governance bodies of Blackstone and Millville. And while a lot of people consider the school committee a board of the two towns, it really is its own governance agency. It's a board in terms of the finances that the towns use to support Blackstone and Millville Regional School District, but it's its own governance agency with its own policies, bylaws, and operational manuals. The agreement that was created between the towns of Blackstone and Millville is one that has not been amended since the creation of the middle school back in the 1980s. The school committee decided that it was time to take a look at that agreement and make sure that it met current statutes, the Educational Reform Act of 1993, the changing laws, the changing policies of the school district itself, and the practices used by the school district in both communities. We did so about a year and a half ago through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, we call that, refer that to that as DESI, and we wanted to make sure that everything matched. So I'm going to invite one of my colleagues to talk to you about how we convened a group and how we went about the processing of looking to amend the regional agreement. Hi, I'm Sarah Williams. I'm the chair of the Regional Agreement Amendment Committee, also known as RAC and I'm gonna walk you through the process for amending the regional agreement. There are two ways that you can start the amendment process. The regional school committee or a citizen petition can start the process. The school committee then appoints a regional agreement amendment committee, including regional school committee members, representatives from the board of selectmen, the town FinComs, and citizens at large. The RAC group will then review the agreement and make recommendations to the school committee. In our case, we chose two representatives from the school committee, one from each town's board of selectmen, one FinCom member from each town, two representatives of parents, and two representatives from the community at large. We also had non-voting members, including the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, the chair of the school committee, and our consultants from the, the Mass Association of Regional Schools. The group met throughout the year and sent their recommendations to the school committee. The school committee then voted to send the amended regional agreement back to you, the voters. The boards of selectmen put the warrant on the annual or special town meeting, and then voters need to decide and vote up or down. If the amendments are approved, it's then sent to the commissioner of DESE and hopefully approved. So what are some of the recommended changes? First, grade range. We needed to put the agreement into compliance with what we're actually doing right now, so we needed to add pre-kindergarten to the text of the agreement. Um, that updates us in terms of both the law and current practice. Next, school committee appointments. There was no language regarding what happens if there's a vacancy on the committee, so we added that school committee members will be appointed if there is a vacancy. Again, it's current practice, we just needed to put it into the agreement. And third, date of school committee elections. This allows the school committee to hold its own election if one town decides to change its election date. School committee vote. It calls for a majority of those present in order for something to be approved. Postgraduate students. This was a little bit confusing. This puts into the agreement that the school committee would be allowed to charge tuition for students wishing to acquire additional schools. Um, this would be the case, they call it a super senior, or if there is a 
program that requires additional time in order to receive a certificate. It's not something that we have in place right now, but we wanted the language in the agreement in case some of our programs require that extra time. And next, student placement. School committee may reassign grades to different schools with a two-thirds vote of all members and more than six months notice. And I am going to turn this over to Dr. DeFalco to talk a little bit more. Thanks so much, Sarah. Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, as Sarah mentioned, I'm Jason DeFalco, superintendent. Um, and I have the pleasure of speaking to folks um, today about, I think, probably what many would uh, pose as um, perhaps the most important part of our um, amendments to our regional agreement. The student placement aspect of this work really uh, for the regional agreement um, amendment committee was anchored around this idea of equitable educational opportunities for kids. And so uh, what we have done is essentially outlined a process, not a plan, but a process that would allow us to get to the place where we could put forward a plan that would outline what that educational opportunity would look like for our youngest learners, uh, particularly for our elementary school students uh, in this particular case. Uh, but to be frank, uh, could be used at any point uh, to look at grade configuration and uh, school assignments across the district. Um, and so uh, I want to underscore the fact that what you will not see in this uh, agreement is a plan itself. What you will see is a process that will allow administration to go through the planning uh, phase to bring forward an actual plan uh, of action for school reassignment. And so let's take a look at what that process actually is. And so you'll see here uh, a few key points that outlines the steps that administration uh, would be able to take should our regional agreement get approved uh, to study and bring forward uh, a potentially uh, different or new model for student placement. Uh, first and foremost, uh, administration would have to do a very thorough study or analysis of our student placement. Um, and that does not just uh, mean looking at class sizes and assignments and those kinds of things, but also looking at space, looking at our real estate, so to speak, uh, and really making sure that uh, we are utilizing our facilities correctly uh, to help ensure equitable opportunities for, for students. Uh, we then need to put together a plan um, that would address some of the equity issues that we are trying to while maximizing our space, keeping in mind class size, all those other things that you would think of uh, that would go into effect transportation uh, and there are a variety of other issues to be discussed and addressed. That plan would need to be presented to the school committee. However, we would ensure, uh, and you'll see the language actually is in the proposal itself, that there is a public hearing and uh, there would need to be a very public process, very public uh, conversation, uh, not just at the end of this phase, but throughout the phase, uh, but specifically the regional agreement would outline a public hearing before a school committee, our school committee would need to vote, uh, two thirds of the committee vote in favor of the uh, proposal moving forward. Um, now, I think the last piece of this process that's really important to underscore is the fact that this would need to happen before January 1st of uh, the next school year. So, um, in other words, if we wanted to make some significant changes for September, all of this work would need to be done uh, before January 1st of that prior year. Uh, so that these changes would not be done swiftly uh, it would be a very lengthy process, a very public process, and folks would have an opportunity uh, to weigh in and share their thoughts, feelings, and opinions before moving forward. Thanks, Dr. DeFalco and Sarah. Uh, there were a few more changes that the committee recommended to the school committee for amendment on the agreement. Uh, one of those was emergency student placement, and that allows for the temporary relocation of students if a physical plant is rendered unusual or an emergency exists such that it makes more sense to reallocate our students 
um, in that state of emergency. And that is at the discretion of the superintendent. Again, common practice um, now more clearly outlined in the amendments to the agreement. Another change was the leased buildings, uh, town leased buildings. The town of Millville owns Mill Millville Elementary School. The town of Blackstone owns JFK AFM. Uh, and they are leased to the district and the agreement outlines what those leases should entail. Um, the lease covers the majority of, of insurance policies and use policies. Uh, the agreement simply allows the fact that the district can lease the buildings from the town. One of the things that was updated in this regional agreement was the process for the budget the assessments to the communities, uh, the debt incurred by the communities, and the language associated with what happens when the school district decides to increase its budget after it was approved by both of the towns. This may seem a new amendment to many people, but it is the common practice outlined in the state's uh, regulations. We added all of the components. And one of the first things it says is that the school committee can adjust the budget with a two-thirds vote. The reason that's in there, as Sarah said earlier, most of the votes required by the school committee are majority of those present. Uh, some of the votes that are much more important to the education of our students, to the operation of our district, do require two-thirds of all members. And so that's not just those at the meeting, it's two-thirds of the eight members that make up the school committee. And this is one of those cases. Uh, it includes all of the sections right out of the Massachusetts regulations uh, verbatim. So if anybody wants to refer to that, it is outlined um, in our documents on our webpage, on the school district's bmrsd.net webpage, and it refers you to the state chapter 7114B, uh, which creates regional agreements and the mass regulations, which show how uh, regional agreements are supposed to be outlined. Another section was the addition of member towns. Again, this just clarifies the process of whether or not the district would choose to add another member, how that would work, and also if a member of the district chooses to withdraw. I want to spend a little bit of time on that one because it seems to have a lot of questions out there. If a town chose to withdraw or wanted to withdraw from the district, they would first have to pass an amendment within their town to do so. Then they would have to bring that amendment to the school committee, which would have to then amend the regional agreement. Because we are only a two-member town, having one town withdraw actually means the dissolution of the regional district. So the school committee would have to outline exactly what that would look like, who was responsible for what, how the debt was going to be paid off over time, uh, what buildings would belong to which communities, and all of that would have to be outlined in an amendment to this actual agreement and have to go before both towns. So it would be a very, very lengthy process if a community wanted to withdraw, and it truly must be passed by both communities. So if one wants to withdraw, but the other one doesn't want them to, it would be a very difficult process to get passed. Um, it would also be very difficult for either one of our communities to act as an independent school district. So we really are a regional district. Uh, we have been regional for over 40 years. Uh, and we hope that that will continue and by looking at this agreement, getting it up to date, making sure we follow state laws, we're on a good path to staying a very strong district. The final thing that this document requires is it requires a five-year review of the regional agreement to pull together another regional agreement amendment committee every five years, have them take a look at the agreement, have them take a look at the state laws, the current practices of the district, and make sure that we have a viable up-to-date agreement. That is something we don't have right now. We have an agreement that's very outdated. It still talks about a junior high school, uh, which we haven't had since 1982, I believe. So we, it's really important that we do this on a regular basis. 
The document also outlines how citizens can change it, and Sarah spoke to that a little bit. If there's a citizen's petition or citizens want to open up the regional agreement and change something, they can come before the school committee, propose an amendment, and the school committee would be required to follow the amendment process. Um, and every five years, they could, in fact, start the process over again, or, or they could say it is up to date and we'll keep it the way that we have it. But this whole document, the whole entity of the document, is really something that is supposed to define the governance body of the Blackstone Millville Regional School District and how that relates to the two communities which are an integral part of making this district what it is. So our next steps, we've produced an amended uh, regional agreement. We've already received preliminary approval from DESE. It's been reviewed by district and town councils, and we've communicated with the public and gotten some feedback from people in both towns. Um, the amendments have already been voted on by the regional school committee, so the next steps are we need it to go to the towns. We're hoping to have the amended agreement voted on by September in both towns. As of right now, we don't have a specific date because of everything that's been going on. Um, but ideally, by early fall, the towns will have an opportunity to vote. If the agreement is approved in both towns, we will send it on for final approval from DESE and we will have an amended agreement. If the vote fails in one of the towns, Blackstone or Millville, then we will have to continue to operate off of our current agreement, which is, as Jane mentioned, currently not reflecting what we're doing and out of compliance. So if there are any questions regarding what we've discussed about the Regional Agreement Amendment Committee, please reach out. You can email a school committee member. You can comment and we'll try and get back to you. And all of the information is available on the district website. Thank you and take care.